Hey guys, what's up? It's me, Lego Leaf 3 Shining here, and today we have a very exciting review for all of Series 14 Monster Minifigures. I found these guys at Target. You might have to hassle around to get them to actually give you these figures, but if you try hard enough and kind of trick the employees, to be completely honest, you might be able to get these figures. These figures, of course, cost $4 a pack, and here's a look at that pack. It is black. It looks really cool. It has lightning and rain in the background. I actually flip it to the other side, and it's lime green, which is kind of interesting and different for these packs. I like to look at the pack quite a bit. And of course, you also get a pamphlet sheet with each minifigure from this series showing all 16 right here. You also flip that around and you can see there is a code. You guys can take that code. I have no idea what minifigure goes with that code. And there's actually directions on how to build some of the minifigures with more complicated cape pieces. So let's actually jump into the minifigures themselves. Do you guys remember the Series 5 Lumberjack minifigure? Well, if you do, this guy might look a little bit familiar. This is figure number one here, the werewolf. He's actually supposed to be the Series 5 Lumberjack turned into a werewolf. That's an awesome inside joke that LEGO put in with this minifigure, and I love it. I love this minifigure. His head mold is actually brand new, and it looks great. He has awesome torso printing, awesome arm printing, awesome leg printing with dual mold legs. And from the back, he also has a great tail piece, the same one that we saw with Racket Raccoon, and he has nice back printing. The bone is kind of a disappointing accessory, but besides that, this minifigure is pretty much flawless. Figure number two here is the zombie pirate. And it feels good to get the worst figure from the series out of the way relatively quickly. This guy is not a poorly made figure necessarily. He's just really boring. I don't know, something about him just doesn't really excite me. I mean, he has decent printing. He has a good face print. The beard is nice to get in that color. But we've seen pirates before. We've seen zombies before. Of course, you've never seen a zombie pirate before necessarily. It's just not the most interesting figure from this series, and I hate that sword. Why not just give him a normal pirate sword, or give him a new mold for his sword? That is not a pirate sword, it does not look very good, and he has absolutely no detail from the back, so a pretty boring minifigure and the worst in the series in my opinion. Figure number three here is the crazy mad scientist. Now we have seen these kind of minifigures before, but not quite like this one. This guy's head here is supposed to look like, you know, it's twice as big as a normal minifig's head, and I love it. I love that piece. I wish Lego would do something quite like that for Caddy Mundy, unlike the terrible piece they made in that Genosian Starfighter set a few years ago. This guy's printing is pretty good. It's not super exciting. His little vial piece is nice to get. The fly inside there, I guess, is a reference to the fly monster from this series, which we'll look out in just a minute. But a good minifigure overall. It's nice to get the double molded legs and double molded arms in this figure, but no details from the back. Good minifigure overall. The head is definitely the best part. And the interesting thing here is you can take off that head piece and he actually has eyes underneath those big goggles, which is pretty cool so I like this figure quite a bit. Figure number four here is the witch. We have seen a witch before from series two minifigures. This one is a lot better however I'm not crazy about this minifigure mainly because of the skirt. It is a skirt a cloth skirt piece which is nice but it doesn't really want to go on the right way and the shade of purple is a little bit just a little bit different from the plastic purple and it doesn't quite match up and it really bothers me. Besides that the broom is an accessory that's pretty boring but was of course needed for a witch that Black Cat is a great piece to get. I love that. Her torso printing is good, her face printing is good, but that hat hair mold piece right there looks really, really good. So overall, good witch minifigure, some details from the back right there. I like this minifigure, just not crazy about the skirt. Figure number five here is what is supposed to be a guy being eaten by a plant monster, and I love this minifigure. The mold for the plant monster's head right there is a huge one and very easy to feel out in the bags, and it just looks so good. It looks so, so good. And his face right there is very scary, which is nice to get, but maybe the best part about this minifigure, surprisingly, is the printing. Look at those vines. It goes all the way from the top of his torso onto his legs, onto the side of his legs, and then onto his feet. It all matches up perfectly. It looks so good. I love that printing right here. This is all around a fantastically detailed minifigure. There's a look at it from the back. I love the look of this figure. Figure number six here is the Fly Monster, who is my second favorite minifigure from this series. His torso printing and leg printing looks pretty good and matches up pretty well at the waist, but it's not, not great. The best part about this figure, obviously, is that new mold for his face. It's molded in a blackish rubber and then a nice translucent dark red plastic for those eyes, and it looks so good. It looks perfect. I love, love, love that piece. I'm not quite sure why he has the crab claw. That's 
kind of random but it's a really cool piece to get in that color and the wings are also cool to get although they look a little bit more cartoonish than the rest of this figure but overall a great looking minifigure especially for the incredible head mold. Figure number six here is the new James Bond film opening up this November Spectre. This guy looks really, really good. He has an exclusive color for the piece on his bottom there, that ghost piece, the new piece in the new Jago sets there with gray mixed in. I also believe his cape piece is new and exclusive to this figure. His face, however, is a little bit more cartoonish, a little bit more friendly than I would have liked, but it does look very good and it actually does glow in the dark, which is a really nice thing. The chain, not the best accessory, but it makes sense. Overall, a pretty cool minifigure. However, there is no printing whatsoever, but there's a look at his cape from the back right there. Figure number eight here is the zombie cheerleader. Now we have seen two cheerleaders in the past, but this one has a brand new hairpiece mold that looks amazing. I absolutely love that hair mold. Everything else is pretty generic, not all that exciting. You really get this figure for the hair mold. There's a look at it from the back, a good minifigure, especially for that hair mold. Figure number nine here is the tiger lady. Now this minifigure just straight up from the front right here, it looks pretty good. But to actually get a feel for how detailed this minifigure is, you have to turn it to the side a little bit. The printing continues on to the arms, the side, the legs, and that tail piece right there from the Simpsons minifigure series also has printing on it. The details here are so, so fantastic. Her face print looks great as well, and her brand new hair slash cat ears mold looks really good. However, the cat ears are painted onto a red piece, and it doesn't look good. That yellow color does not show up very well on the cat ears. Besides that, a great minifigure along with some great back printing. The details here are so great. Figure number 10 here is the Gargoyle and my personal favorite minifigure from this series. He has two brand new molds, one for his head and one for his wings and they both look fantastic and they're both molded in hard plastic which is very nice to see. The stone printing on him just looks so good. I love that stone printing all around this minifigure besides the legs. Unfortunately the legs don't have any stone printing which is not consistent with the rest of the minifigure but besides that this figure is perfect. I love it. My favorite from the series. Figure number 11 here is a trick-or-treater in a skeleton costume. Now this guy has absolutely no new molds. He has some fantastic printing and the printing not only is great, it's revolutionary. You're probably all scratching your heads like, Lee, what do you mean? What do you mean this printing is revolutionary? Well, let's turn this figure around just a little bit. You see the side of his head there? He has a string going from his mask all the way around, 360 degrees around his head. I don't think I've ever seen a minifigure ever have side head printing. That's a brand new thing, I believe, for this figure. Correct me if I'm wrong, and it's so good. It just looks so good. Everything else with this minifigure looks amazing. His printing, his details are so well done, and LEGO was able to make one of the best minifigures from this series despite not having any new molds. I love the look of this minifigure. It seems like a monster minifigure series would not really be complete without a Frankenstein minifigure here. Now this figure is a little bit of a different spin here. Figure number 12 is the monster rocker. It's Frankenstein but also a rock star and I love the look of this minifigure. Again, a great figure that has zero new molds. That guitar there looks really, really really awesome. I love that guitar. His torso printing is great. His arms are great. His legs are great. His face is great. And I especially love his back printing right there. Overall, a great looking minifigure. Unlucky number 13 goes to the zombie businessman who seems like he's a businessman having not so great of a day. So he is unlucky like number 13 would suggest. This is a good figure. His printing is good. I love the printed towel piece. It says brains on the side. The briefcase, of course, we have seen before. His face print is pretty good. But the main reason you want this minifigure is for the brand new hairpiece. Peter Parker, Marty McFly, many others. I think the hairpiece could be put to some fantastic uses. Overall, a good minifigure. Not terribly exciting, but the hairpiece is great. Let's look at him from the back. He's a good minifigure, just not awesome in my opinion. Figure number 14 here is another figure making great use of the new Ninjago Ghost piece. This is the Banshee and she looks incredible. The most noticeable thing about this minifigure is her brand new hairpiece. Now, at first sight, the hairpiece might look like gray or black or something. Well, it's actually molded in translucent black and it looks so good. I love the way that hairpiece looks. I believe it's the first time we've ever gotten a hairpiece in a translucent color before. That is so cool. It's a brand new mold as well. Hopefully down the line we'll see it in some more normal, more useful colors. I love the look of this minifigure. Her back printing is great as well. Overall, a fantastic looking Banshee minifigure right here. I found him, guys. I found Bigfoot. 
Figure number 15 here is what LEGO is actually calling square foot, which is a funny spin on things, and I love this minifigure now. Yes, this is using the exact same piece that the Beaver from Shima and of course Yeti from Series 11 used, but I don't care. This is a Sasquatch to me, it looks like a Sasquatch, and this minifigure is awesome. I absolutely love the look of this minifigure, and it's so cool to get a Bigfoot, a Sasquatch minifigure in Lego form. I'm sure some people can make some awesome mocks with that idea. The only disappointing part to me here is this camera accessory is kind of strange, but also funny, but he has almost no printing. He has printing on his feet, which is great. Besides that, Nothing. That's a little bit disappointing, but he's a great looking minifigure otherwise, and I just love that fact that I have a Sasquatch Lego figure. Unfortunately, we're going to end series 14 here on a rather low note with figure number 16 here, the Spider Lady. She is cool-ish. She has a nice red spider. Her printing is good. The hair piece is great to get in that black color. However, it's kind of useless because of the spider web print. The best part of this minifigure definitely is the plastic cape piece that has the spider web. It just looks really good, but I don't know. This figure just doesn't really interest me. It seems like it should be a vampire. Her face print really just screams vampire to me, but it's a spider lady. That's just real weird. This is a strange minifigure from the series and definitely one of my least favorites. All right, guys. Final verdict here on series 14 minifigures. This is a really well-rounded series. There are hardly very any weak links, and even the figures I don't really like have some very nice pieces included with them. However, there aren't too many figures in this series that just jump out to me as must-have characters, but that's not a huge problem when you have so many good figures, and LEGO really stepped up their printing game with this series. Figures like the skeleton suit guy, the guy in the plant, those are all so fantastically printed. The Tiger Lady, the detail on some of these figures is incredible. Now, in my reviews for these minifigure series, I usually like to give like tiers. So tier one for me, my four personal favorites would be number one, the gargoyle, number two, the fly monster, number three, the guy in the skeleton suit, and number four, the plant monster. My four least favorite for this series would be the zombie businessman, a good figure, just not crazy about it. The witch, again, a good figure, just not crazy about it. Then the spider lady just doesn't really make a whole lot of sense to me, and of course, the zombie pirate. Overall, I think this is a really, really good minifigure series. I'm going to give it an 8.7 out of 10. Those are just my thoughts. I'd love to hear yours in the comment section down below. And guys, don't forget to like this video, favorite the video, share the video with all your friends, go like me on Facebook, follow me on Twitter, and follow me on Instagram. Please subscribe to this channel, and I hope to see you guys in the more collectible figure series reviews. I'll see you guys later. Bye.